instruction in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Remember, protect your signs, and you must obey my command at all. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. 50 years ago, Emil Griffith champion. facing a middleweight champion in Madison Square Garden, and he won the fight. And Ray Leonard was seen by most as a welterweight when he moved up. Ken Kelbrook following the footsteps of fighters like Leonard and Griffith. We're about to see. There was a full-scale wave of speculation on the web, particularly in America yesterday, on the notion that he was ill under the weather, didn't look good at the weigh-in. He and everyone in his camp says there is no all right. Agreed, Bernard? Well, he looks good now, and he's been who he is. He comes right. forward. No, I think he's fine. I think it was just a rumor, and he said it. Looking more the way he did against Dominic Wade, trying to get in and land power shots. He takes a right hand from Brooke as he's trying to land his left foot. Brooke got some swelling, maybe a little bruise from the left right foot, from, the right, from Triple G. Triple G is setting him up, and if he's still on that rope... Body shot, Brooke is in trouble. And Brooke reaches him up and hammered him to deliver with a body shot. If he survive in this fight, he has to fight his fight. Fight by Brooke. Left hook brought the crowd alive. Golovkin nodding at him as if to say, oh, okay. you got Kill, Kill Brooke is not, and he has to now find a way to survive this round. Triple G is continuing to put pressure, and he's continuing to make his punches count. Back Golovkin off a little bit. And just one punch. He's throwing a jab, but one punch at a time, and he's going back towards the rope. He must keep... Triple G. Triple G is number one in the sport by Papi Stop and landing jab. There's a good uppercut for Brook. And now Golovkin comes back. There's a mark outside Golovkin's left eye. From the, right. the puncher, a bigger chance. Triple G will have a bigger and a greater chance in exchange. In round one. Here's the left. Because of Kell being on the rope, he got it quote with the left. Me, rather, and he should have been moving, but he stayed there and got hit with a right hand. How to avoid that right hand is not be on the ropes. The biggest moment of round see. one when Brooke reached out and grabbed Golovkin to pull him to him after the two left hands. There's the uppercut that landed for Brooke, and there's the right mark hand. outside of Golovkin's left eye. So both fighters are marked. <laughs> Veteran referee Marlon Wright staying distance to give. Freedom of movement for Golovkin and Brook. Patient but consistent because if he sits there and wait and take a neither one of you on the end of those punches. He has to be thrown by both men. And if he's not first, I don't believe he can take the power in a long fight with Triple G. Well, for better for worse, the fight with Triple G. Maybe he wants it that way. And they're trading in the center of the ring. And right now, Brook is getting the better of able to get too comfortable because Triple G is a high percentage knockout punch, but he can't think about, Kelbrook can't think about the power, but he must think about the, the, what, he, what can happen as far as knockdown. He must be conscious of that. Lovkin going to his jab now in round one. Now jabbing, set up the right hand. And Golovkin landing and sweeping a right hand across Brook. Brook is through a nice short counter. Lovkin has not been knocked down in his profession. Counter. When Triple G throws one punch or a wild punch, he's waiting to counter. He's a better counter puncher when Triple G is coming out of his seats. Excited by the uppercut. Brooke getting in some heavy. Lovkin gets in a right hand over the top. But Brooke comes back with a fourth. Will he buy himself time? Where he wears out Triple G to the point where Triple G is in him. Brooke seems to have realized early on that Golovkin wants to put pressure on him, wants to put him in a box in both of the first two rounds. Later Brooke setting up that left uppercut because he threw the right knee first. And he's seen this punch because before the round, he did, if he continued to throw it in spots where it's needed. Brooke, let's not get too brave, but smart enough to fight a smart man fight. Rather than a knockdown, Golovkin totally in agreement. 
Well, you see Rush because what is urgency? Is urgency because he see himself getting outboxed and getting hit and never got hit with. And I'm pretty sure his trainer told him to go out there. He's digging to the body with a three-punch combination. Triple G, jab, right hand. Left was able to keep a lot of the action in the center of the ring where he likes it. Golovkin has been able to... Hard right hand by Golovkin. Just misses with the left hook. To now get confidence. If both continue to win rounds here and there and go into a late rounds, I'm trying to go ahead and establish his, his, his dominance. But not be leery or worry about the jab because he's so confident that he can hit Brooke and maybe hurt him. If he had landed it solidly, he could have hurt Golovkin. I think he is hurt. He got hit with a short uppercut just now with a right hand. And, and Brooke is now throwing more than where he gets the bad in the Brooke is trying to build the first the momentum immediately. Yesterday, maybe thinking again that they were on to something. But Golovkin keeps bearing in and putting pressure on Kel Brook here in round three. Starting to swell badly. And Triple G is doing left and a straight right. And Brook comes back aggressively. Winning the admiration of the crowd. And for both fighters. Now I'm seeing a position of throwing the right hand, which he did. A right hook that came around the left hand of Brook. And the punch is there because he's sitting there. Now here go. Now here we go with right. throwing combinations after the jab. What I would call a lot of wild or desperation punches in the fights we've seen up to this moment. Here and there is out boxing him, competing with him. Perhaps won the second round. Johnny Golovkin finds himself, it appears, in the closest thing to a real fight so far. Well, so, Triple G showing some frustrations because running, boxing, moving, punching, slipping. Every now and then, books and his corners continue to tell him, don't be on the ropes, be in the center of the ring, or keep moving left to right. As you see on the ropes, Triple G has a shot when he's on the ropes. Bad face right now. Landing some solid punches. Golovkin taking them so far. Yes, and Brook face right now is showing the effect of the power. As I suggested might be the case. Golovkin placing body shots now. Whether it's coming from the left side or the right side, he has it. Second round. Golovkin sticking the jab. Both fighters' faces are showing damage from the shots they've landed in the first three rounds. Trying to hammer Brook to deliver one more time with the left hand here in the fourth. It looked like it looked like Triple G is just actually, you know, pushing his punches. Doesn't look like in, in speed. What I mean, speed. The power is there, but the speed is not there. It seemed like arm. They had no snap on. We call them arm punches in boxing. It's much sharper, much cleaner. See the short left hand Brook. Those are the kind of punches that Golovkin isn't mm -hmm. spot on. Trust me, I'm watching every moment. I'm watching every moment. Do you understand? Dominic Ingalls is called the bait and switch. This is called the bait and switch. He pulled him in to counter him. He pulled him in to throw a punch. There's some urgency from Engel talking to Brook. 39, 37, Gennady Golovkin. You know, Jim, he's got some jaw. I mean, I haven't seen a guy stand there and trade with Gennady Golovkin in God knows how long. Three to one. And Golovkin delivers his fiercest rally of the fight. Completes that scoring summary. Now Brook holding out his arms as if to say, Look to the ropes, Bernard. And Brook is putting his hands up like he wasn't hurt, but you know, he might be hurt later. So I think he should stay focused. I think he was hurt a little bit. And let the opponent know that you're not hurt. But that normally means the opposite. He needs himself to get countered like he just did with a straight right. And, and I believe he's hurt with this. And so now Triple G is going to keep him there. Play through the fifth round. Golovkin is now landing body shots again he did in round number one. And yes, he is. He's pop shotting right now. As you see this. And Dominic, Dominic in the far corner hurt. is holding up a towel. Engel is trying to get referee Marlon Wright to stop the fight. And now he finally throws the towel. He's going to have a technical knockout victory in round number five. And that's an amazing decision on the part of Dominic Engel. We saw his urgency between rounds prior to that round. But who would have thought? He was in that same position, but he, he, he got out of that position. I don't see no difference. This is earlier in round five, Bernard. Exactly. Here's it right now. To me, he's... He,
the undefeated, universally recognized middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Gennadyovich Golovkin, aka.